see if we can find out when he's going to take his vacation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can I help you? I think so. I'm Chuck Adams, the crew leader of the scaffold team. Uh, I was told you had a job for us. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I almost forgot about you guys. Look, anyway, it's a simple job. We need a two-level scaffold so maintenance can get at a flange. Okay. Where is it? It's the flange on the HCR line, out by the switchgear room. Look, you can't miss it with all the red tags all over it. I was just out there. Everything's ready to go. What about the permit? We'll take care of that pronto. Okay, you need to stay clear of the four-inch line because it's carrying some superheated steam. And be careful around the big PVC line. It's handling a nasty corrosive chemical. You drop something heavy on that sucker, it's liable to rupture. <laughs> if any of your crew gets a hot foot, there's a safety shower out behind the P125 compressor. Where? The big centrifugal. Look, you have no trouble finding it. Just follow your ears. And that should do it. Any questions, Chuck? Nah. Sounds like a piece of cake. Let's see. Well, what do you think of Bob's safe work permit? Was there anything safe about it? How would you like to be in Chuck's shoes, getting ready to do a job with that kind of permit? Not me. Not in a million years. Just about everything the safe work permit is supposed to do was violated by Bob when he issued that armchair permit. And good old Chuck took it with a smile, so he's just as guilty. For the remainder of this program, we're going to focus on the right way to use the safe work permit. We're going to explain the duties of the permit issuer and the recipient of the permit. And we're going to talk about when and why a permit is needed. Later in the program, we'll check back with Bob and Chuck. In any plant, there are many potential hazards. Things like toxic chemicals, high temperatures and pressures, and high-speed mechanical equipment. When working with or around all of these hazards, we need a system that can help us control the risks of an incident. The Safe Work Permit provides that system. Basically, the Safe Work Permit is a communication tool. It includes a checklist to see that proper procedures, equipment, and precautions are in place before any maintenance or repair work begins. Many jobs require the issuing of a safe work permit. These include some electrical work, welding and hot tapping, non-electrical hot work, line and equipment opening, confined space entry, excavation, hydroblasting, radiography, online leak repair, asbestos jobs, and personnel and some equipment lifts. Permits are also required when any person or group requests one. The permit system is only as good as the people behind it. Both the permit issuer and the recipient of the permit have important responsibilities. Let's start with the person who issues the permit. The permit issuer's first duty is to make sure the work area is free of hazards. On some jobs, this will mean isolating equipment and applying red danger tags, cleaning and purging the area to remove hazardous chemicals or residues, and testing the area for toxics, flammables, and oxygen deficiency. Before a permit is issued, there must always be a joint job site visit involving the permit issuer and the receiver of the permit. 
The purpose of this visit is to avoid any misunderstanding about what the job entails and what the hazards are in that particular area. Plus, another set of eyes helps to see any hidden hazards. During the visit, the issuer of the permit should check out the area to make sure it is physically safe for work to start. It should be free of any obvious hazards like chemical leaks or deteriorated equipment. The issuer should point out exactly what needs to be done and identify the specific area or equipment to be worked on. The recipient should be informed of the status of the equipment or area, including what steps have been taken to prepare it for work. In some cases, it may be necessary to mark the equipment or area to avoid confusion. The owner should also warn the person doing the work of any local safety hazards. These could be within the equipment itself, chemicals for example, or they could be in the general area where the work is being done, like high voltage lines. Emergency equipment like eyewash stations should be checked and the location of fire extinguishers identified. The permit recipient should also know what to do in the event of an emergency. Let's now go back and see how Bob and Chuck should have handled the safe work permit process. How about if you see if you can find out when Mr. Brown's going to take his vacation? No mm worries, -hmm. Yeah, can I help you? I think so. I'm Chuck Adams, crew leader of the scaffold team. They told me you have a job for us. That's right, we do. It's a simple job. But I need to point out a few things that you need to be aware of out at the job site. Okay. Let's take a walk out there and I'll write you a permit. people are going to be working. Okay, well everything looks normal out here. Now what we need you to do is to build a two-level scaffold so maintenance can get at a flange up there. All right, now be careful around this line up here. It's carrying superheated steam and it'll burn you if you make contact. Now the other major hazard is a corrosive chemical that runs through this PVC line. Now be careful not to drop any tools or pipe on this line because you could break it open. Well we'll keep our stuff off those lines, believe me. Okay. Now we keep a fire extinguisher next to this pipe support and there's a safety shower and eye wash station over here. But also, the people need to carry an emergency escape respirator when they work out here. I'll make sure of it. Not about covers it. Any questions? Yeah, just a couple things. On this PVC line carrying corrosive. Uh, would it be alright for us to uh, protect it with a shield of some type? Oh, yeah. Looks like Bob did a better job second time around. And Chuck did a better job too. That's important because it's the receiver of the permit who has to do the work safely. Let's take a look at the duties of the permit recipient. Before starting work, the recipient should thoroughly understand all aspects of the permit. Don't start work if you have any questions that could affect the safety of personnel or equipment. Also, share all details of the permit with your crew. They need to understand the nature of the work and the hazards as much as you. If the scope of the job changes, notify the permit issuer before expanding or changing the nature of your work. The whole idea behind the safe work permit is communication between the owner and those doing the work. A change of scope could bring new and different hazards into play, so keep the owner informed. Keep an eye out for hazards while you're doing the job. The safe work permit only means the area was safe at the time of inspection. Conditions can and do change. If a hazard like a leak or a gas release does occur, stop the job and report it immediately. When your work is completed, clean up the job site. Don't leave a mess which can lead to accidents. Housekeeping is an important aspect of every job. Finally, when the job is finished, sign the permit and return it to the issuer for closeout. Most permits are only good for the shift in which they were issued. The status of the job and any red danger tags should be noted at the time of closeout. We said that safe work permits are only issued for a limited time duration and that the permit does not guarantee a safe work environment for the duration of the job there are conditions that automatically cancel a safe work permit.
Permits are considered invalid if the emergency horn sounds. If safe work conditions change. If there is an incident or accident on the job. If the scope of the job changes or if the job exceeds the permit deadline. That's the story on safe work permits. They are a key part of our company's entire safety program. They function as a communications tool and as a safety checklist to minimize the risks of any job. A safe work permit is a requirement for most maintenance and repair jobs that are performed by people who do not normally work in the area. As the issuer of a safe work permit, you are responsible for preparing the area or equipment for work. This may involve cleaning, testing, isolating, and red tagging equipment. You must also perform an on-site inspection with the person doing the work. You should make sure this person understands all safety rules, emergency procedures, chemical hazards, personal protective equipment, and special tools or precautions needed to perform the job safely. The recipient of the permit has important duties also. You must understand all aspects of the permit and share this knowledge with other members of the crew. You should stay alert for hazards and notify the permit issuer if the scope of the job changes. And finally, you should clean up the work site at the completion of the job and sign and return the permit to the person who issued it. Whether you're the issuer or the receiver of a safe work permit, remember it's the backbone of our company's safety program. But like all our safety regulations and procedures, it requires your thoughts and cooperation to work. Don't take shortcuts when it comes to the safe work permits, and don't let others bend the rules. Stay within the system, and the system will work for you.